24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, and 18. Now, if my that's my blood hydrostatic pressure, right? This is my arterial end. This is my venule end. If my blood colloid osmotic pressure is compromised, liver disease, starvation, not eating enough protein, or if you get burned and all those proteins can escape, because remember, one of the layers of the um, basement membrane traps large molecules in the body. If we burn our skin off and we lose a lot of that protein, it can lead to protein deficiency. So if my blood colloid osmotic pressure drops to say 20 millimeters of mercury, and I do that all the way down here, look what happens to my dynamic center. It is shifted towards the venule end. Again, a high blood pressure or a low blood colloid osmotic pressure results in the exact same conditions. So if blood colloid osmotic pressure is decreased, I get the same conditions as I would get if I had high blood pressure. I could get peripheral edema or sepsis or both. I would have the dynamic center shifting towards the venule. I would get increased tissue perfusion, decreased recall of fluids, and therefore peripheral edema and sepsis. Eventually things like neuropathy can result. Okay, so now that covers pages 64 and 65 in my note set. For those of you in my class, you can fill in all that information. Um, there's a little table on here that talks about what happens to the pressure change, blood hydrostatic pressure due to high blood pressure, what happens to the dynamic center and the resulting fluid movement. That table is this information. You should be able to fill all that in. You also need to look up what are venous valves. I've talked about venous valves in a, in a previous lecture. They prevent the backward flow of, of blood and veins. You need to look up what is the muscular pump. Essentially what happens is when our skeletal muscles contract, they squeeze those deep veins and force blood back towards the heart, increasing venous return. We've talked about that before. You can read about how breathing assists venous return as we inhale and exhale the changes in the pressure. And you need to read about anaphylactic shock. I will talk about that briefly and then we're done. Anaphylactic shock or anaphylaxis occurs when something hits our system and for some reason we get peripheral vasodilation. All of the arterioles and arteries in our body start to dilate. When all of the blood vessels dilate at the same time, then the pressure in the system drops and blood flow can become very, very low. Blood pressure can drop to dangerously low levels. With a decreased blood flow to the brain, people start to get lightheaded and pass out. We call that anaphylactic shock. Some people have allergies to um, insect bites and stings because the toxins cause anaphylactic shock, a systemic blood vessel dilation, a systemic drop in blood pressure, and then people can get lightheaded and pass out, sometimes die if it's extreme enough. Which is why, by the way, people carry the EpiPens, epinephrine, norepinephrine doesn't last as long in a container, so they, they um, they modify the molecule slightly in the epinephrine, makes it last longer. You inject it into a muscle, the epinephrine goes in and will cause vasoconstriction of certain vessels and it will increase your systemic blood pressure. It also increases force of contraction of the heart and all of that. Anyway, that's anaphylactic shock. Um, that's going to conclude the blood vessel lectures and um, pretty soon we're going to start the respiratory system. I hope those of you in my class were able to fill in the note set and when the worksheets are available you can fill them in and prepare for the quiz. I hope you learned something. Those of you who are not in my class that happen to stumble across these videos, I hope you had as much fun as I did. I hope you learned something and I hope this was helpful. If not, well I did the best I could. Drop me some information to tell me how I could do this better. And finally, again these are all impromptu videos. Um, I had some plans of doing my YouTube videos and my YouTube channel with really nicely edited videos, but due to the, the um, extreme circumstances of this coronavirus outbreak, I'm forced to be doing these rapidly, as many in a day as I can to meet my students' needs so we can finish the semester on time. I fully intend on redoing these videos, much neater, much more thorough, much better. All right, thanks. See you all on the flip side.